So I have a problem with my Truist CX. Um, <clears throat> nothing technically wrong with the radio, but with the user who's using it, which is me. I keep blowing the final transistors on this radio. Uh, no real fault of the radio, technically. Um, it doesn't have any sort of SWR protection, um, which is what this video is about, trying to add it. Uh, but I, you know, I've, I've hooked up antennas to it when I'm doing a uh, POTA activation without um, you know, tuning it if it's an NFET half wave or something like that. And SWR is too high and it blows the finals. So it goes from you know five six watts out to 0, 0.0 something or nothing at all, um, even on you know, like a 12, 13 volt uh, power supply, which is a dead giveaway that you blew your finals. Um, so I've done that twice. While um, it is fun getting soldering practice, this is not the way I would prefer to get soldering practice in. So um, I posted on the True SDX forums uh, a few weeks back, uh, seeing if anybody's had any ideas on how to protect the finals and of course other people have already thought of that and come up with solutions uh so this is something that was uh recommended to me um in a private message um on the true sdx forums and this is from pure uh, qrp guys uh which are um you know great group of guys if i'm sure if you're into ham radio and qrp stuff you already know about them um but um i like their little end fed half wave i think it's like an 80 to 10 um tunable um well, it's a tuner for NFET half waves uh, that I've used a lot, and I love it. it has a little uh, LED on it, and so um, it's small, compact, um, light, very, very simple. Even I can use it. Um, I love that thing. So anyway, I rate them very highly, um, high regard rather. Um, but they have this little module for the True SDX, which is super cool. And so you just have to do some slight modification. Obviously, take the uh, the existing finals out. Um, I think you have to put a socket in. Um, in one of their places, and then you pop this guy on top, and it has a Zener diode, and it has the three finals with like a little heat sink kind of deal. Um, looks great. So it's only ten bucks, which is awesome. Um, definitely would be worth the cost. But problem is, it's um, you know, there's not going to be available until uh, first. It was like August, but I think this is a pretty small shop, and so unfortunately they had some some health concerns or something like that. So it's not going to be available until December. Um, so I kind of kept looking for solutions. And I found this in the True SDX forums also. Uh, this is from user Alpha Charlie 8 Lima. And this was back in February of 2024 this year. And um, you know he's had a similar problem, or he or she has had a similar problem. And they... Uh, they had a similar solution. Um, they got a Zener diode and um, actually put it, instead of putting it right on the finals, because you'd need, I, I assume you need one per final in that case, which is a little, I think, overkill um, and kind of needlessly complicated, which is usually something I go for. Um, but when it comes to radio, I think maybe simpler is better, um, mainly because I, I'm not totally sure what I'm doing. But anyway, um, they put one just right on the board between RF and ground. Um, and so, yeah, if you know SWR gets too high, um, goes above the cutoff voltage of the Zener diode, which is like 47 volts or something like that. Um, it protects the finals, which is awesome. So I decided to pick up some Zener diodes, the ones that they mentioned here, and uh, give it a try on my radio. Let's get the sandwich apart. So these are the three BS-170s that we're trying to protect. And this is where we're going to do our modification. Uh, these are 1N45, excuse me, 1N4756As. Um, these were, you know, 150 uh, pieces for less than 10 bucks on Amazon. And they came with a free basketball pin, which my kids will, I'm sure, enjoy fighting over. Let's get these opened and uh, get one out and... Um, get this started. So the idea is we're going to put the Zener diode ooh, like that from RF to ground. I don't think it matters which ground, but I am not an electronics engineer, and so I am going based on forum posts in the True SDX forum. He used that ground, he or she, so I am going to use that ground as well. So let's get that guy soldered in.
then we have to hook up to a uh, dummy load and a 12 volt uh, battery pack here, or 13 volt. Um, let's see what it does. So it's in CW mode, so we get a constant carrier. So it says five watts out. Looks like we're getting RF out, that's good. So I didn't break it. All right, so um, that worked as expected. So we know that it's at least outputting power when the SWR is good. Um, let's test to see if the finals blow. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. Um, but like I say, usually I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, so I'm just gonna put it in CW mode, no antenna. Um, so you'd think the SWR would be very, very high. In the past, when I hit this button, it will fry the finals. So this is a bit of a gamble, but three, two, one, let's try it. Okay, about three watts into essentially the Xenu diode, I guess, at this point. Um, but let's do something. Let's hook up the dummy load again, right? Because by my line of thinking, which could be wrong, um, if the diode did its job, then it protected the finals. And when I hit this button, the meter should move. So this is after the diode is installed. Let's give it a try. Haha! Look at that. I think it worked. So if I didn't know any better, I would think that actually worked. Um, so yeah, if you have this radio um, and you want to protect the finals, uh, pretty cheap mod and you can do it for 149 of your closest friends. Plus, you get a basketball pin. What's not to like? Cool. Well, I'm going to go play with this, um, hopefully this weekend. And um, if I run into any problems, I'll make another video, but I doubt it because um, looks like there's RF out, which is great. So um, maybe it'll affect the power out. Maybe I doubt it, um, but I don't know. RF is magic. So thanks and see you guys later.